Grace, peace, and mercy are yours through Jesus Christ, our blessed Redeemer, who lives, rules, and reigns, both now in the church and forevermore in the heavenly places yet to come. Amen. Beloved of the Lord, our message this day on the 21st Sunday after Pentecost is based on our gospel lesson from Luke chapter 17. And here, just again, the words that were shouted forth before Jesus by the ten lepers. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. This is our text. You may be seated below in the Lord. I invite you to bow your heads for a word of prayer. Almighty and ever-living Father, we bless and praise your holy name. Maybe not thousands of tongues this morning, but hundreds of tongues in this place and tens of billions of tongues singing your praise in your house, the house of prayer, wherever your people are gathered around word and sacrament this day. We are gathered in the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace that has been restored by your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ, who has had mercy upon us. We praise you for the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation we have through his fame, his fame, his work. And we implore you to continually give to us the gift of your Holy Spirit that we can walk in uprightness of heart and life, serving you in gladness with hand and heart and voice. We implore you, dearest Jesus, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Now, if you're like me in life, you might have times where you've had a really bad day. I can recount in a recent time having a bad day when the doctor came in and said you have cancer and besides that it's stage three. But that day was trumped recently again as I had a telephone call from my physician to say, unfortunately, the stage three cancer has now escalated to stage four. But there was a gentleman who was having a really rough day. He overslept because his alarm clock failed to go off. And when he arrived at work, his boss fired him because he was late for a meeting. He sat in a bar in the afternoon and he was simply staring at the double that had been poured by the bartender when bursting through the door was a boisterous truck driver who, when he saw the, uh, the man looking at his drink, he reached over, grabbed his drink, and, and drank it to, its, to the very bottom, only leaving the ice cubes and shoving it down before the man again, who burst into tears. Now, the truck driver felt really bad to see a grown man crying over the loss of his drink. He said, you know, it's not that bad. It's okay. I'll buy you another drink. And the man said, you don't understand. I've had the worst day of my life. I lost my job this morning. And then uh, when I went out after being given the box of my goods from my desk, someone had stolen my car, and so I had to take a cab home. And when I arrived at home, the cab was, uh, I could only see the dust of the tracks in the distance, remembering that I left my wallet there in the cab. And when I got to the front door, their attack on the door was a note from my wife saying, I've taken the kids, and I'm returning to mother, and I want a divorce. And then I went uh, to the chemist, and then I came here to the bar, and now to add insult to injury, you drank my poison. <laughs> we might say that both of those gentlemen were having a bad day <coughs> after that point. Unfortunately, we have imbibed in a poison, a venom like no other that was first injected to our first parents, Adam and Eve, with the onslaught of original sin, and so all of us forcing through our veins is death. We might consider that we are having a bad day because the scriptures clearly teach that the wages of sin is death. And all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, the Bible clearly teaches us. And in our broken estate, we see how unevenly is distributed pain and suffering and agony and struggles and woe and terrorism and murders and envy and 
the strife and gloom and doom of every description. Jesus, in his earthly ministry, came teaching and preaching and saying that he was ushering in the kingdom of God and bringing the year of the Lord's favor. And these things were being made known to the crowds throughout Israel, throughout Judah and Galilee, and even into Samaria and into Lebanon, as the Lord came with the healing touch and, and the word of good news and of grace. And now, along with his disciples, Jesus making his final journey in chapter 17 of Luke's Gospel, making his final journey to Jerusalem, teaching and instructing his disciples that I must go up to Jerusalem for no prophet can die outside of Jerusalem and there I will be handed over to the hands of sinful men and I will be put to death. And in their anguish and in their fear at these words of Jesus, they failed to hear the rest of the story as Jesus said, but on the third day I will rise again. And as they are going, making the journey for the final time to Jerusalem where Jesus would celebrate the Passover and then give his own life. There is the encounter we see today from verses 11 and following where there are 10 lepers who we might say were really having not just a bad day or a bad week but a bad life. The lepers, unfortunately, because of the disease that they had contracted in their culture at that time, were terminal. What was known as leprosy in the day of Jesus, in modern day we know as Hansen's disease, which begins with white patches on the skin, where the feeling and the deadness of that, because of the nerve endings dying, and that white patch of dying skin can spread especially to the face, spongy tumors appearing, and the, the loss of the ability to have feeling in the, in the digits, the fingers and the toes, so that many times those with this disease could put their hands in fire and not realize that they were being burned, that they might have wounds that would not heal because they could not feel the sensation of pain. Most of the, the lepers did not die of leprosy, as hideous and horrible as it was, but from other diseases because of their weakened immune system uh, that plagued them because of the disease coursing through their bodies. Great fear gripped people uh, because of this disease, leprosy, so that they were sent out from the community and from the church. They were declared unclean. You can read from Leviticus how there was a great uh, trial that if someone is ever to be declared clean once again in order to be restored, you can think about the Old Testament, uh, the foreigner Naaman, who went to the prophet Elijah to be healed of his leprosy because of the terrible nature of this disease. And yet these ten, they were often known not as zombies from modern day movies, but they were known in the day of Jesus as the living dead. And these living dead, these ten, were gathered because misery loves company, when they see the Lord Jesus coming, they cry out to him. It's important for us to know and understand that these lepers had a deadly problem. They didn't band together and say, oh, well, I'm feeling better today and I think my leprosy is going to go away. No, every day in their misery they knew that they were on the slow march to death. recognize that Jesus can fix the problem. Beloved, we need to realize and understand we may not have some kind of a heinous disease like leprosy or cancer or some kind of a physical calamity that has befallen us in our life and times. But we all have a terminal spiritual illness of sin. Because of this, we are helpless we are hopeless. The Bible says, the prophet Isaiah, ah, a sinful nation, a people loaded with guilt, a brood of evildoers, children given to corruption. They have forsaken the Lord. They have spurned the Holy One of Israel and turned their backs on Him. 
From the sole of your foot to the top of your head, there is no soundness, only wounds and wells and open sores, not cleansed or bandaged or soothed by oil. No MRI, no CAT scan, no kind of test can you take to show this. But as you scan God's holy word, we find the judgment of the law therein that tells us because of sin, we deserve to die and to be separated from God eternally. We, like the lepers, have a big problem. The first thing we have to do is to recognize that problem. The lepers didn't say we're not so bad. Things will get better. We're recovering after all. Even in modern times, those who have undergone 12-step programs to recover from drug abuse or pornography abuse or all the abuses uh, that plague our modern society, in those 12-step programs, step number one is to say, I have a problem with X, Y, and Z, and I cannot fix this problem on my own. I am addicted to X, Y, and Z. And we must readily admit as God's people that we have a problem that we cannot fix. The sins that so easily plague us. God's power is released as we step forward in faith. <coughs> the ten lepers, when they saw Jesus coming by, cried out, Jesus, Master, have mercy upon us. To this very day, dear Prince of Christ, it is the cry of the church, and we will kneel down in our time of prayer later in this worship, and we will sing together, Lord, have mercy, Kyrie eleison, Christ, have mercy, Christe eleison, Lord, have mercy, Kyrie eleison. The cry of the church is that God would mercy us. That is, in an undeserved way, God would, in Christ, bless us, that he would cleanse us, that he would make us whole, that he would forgive our sins, and knowing, as Luther said, wherever there is the forgiveness of sins, there also is life, life, and salvation. Jesus, when he heard the cry, stopped render aid. Go and show yourselves to the priests, Jesus told them. And they responded, all ten of them, to the word of God, spoken to them by the very word of God made flesh, Jesus Christ. Go show yourself to the priests. They left immediately, and while they were going, they were cleansed. They listened to the word of God. We can think about how the Word of God in the flesh came to the disciples. And how for one instance, the disciples were in a boat and they were buffeted by wind and wave on the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus came after his prayer time on the mountain, walking on the water towards them. And they were filled with fear when they saw this specter. And Christ said, Do not be afraid, it is I. And so Peter said, well, if it is you, Lord, then bid me come. And Jesus told Peter, come. And heeding the word of God and keeping his eyes on Christ, Peter went out walking on the water because he heard the word of God and he responded in faith. And this miraculous thing took place until Peter took his eyes off of Christ. And when he looked to the left and the right and saw the winds and the waves and was filled with fear once again, he began to sink and had to cry out, Jesus, have mercy on me. Save me. And the Lord chided him, oh, you of little faith. As we encounter Christ in his word, as he speaks to us, we are to step up and to step out. Not filled with fear, but the faith. And as they went, they were all cleansed. But one, having seen that he was cleansed, returned. He didn't merely want 
to have a Savior who helped him and aided. You know, the Lord God causes the rain to fall on the just and the unjust. Miracles of health and strength and life are intermittently given to people on the globe as God gives uh, hands and minds to surgeons and to counselors and to all those people in the helping locations that people, his creation, might be helped. Nine went on their way in true religion to show themselves to the priest, enjoy being restored by God, but one returned wanting more than that to be in a relationship with the one who had healed him. And as that Samaritan, who was different from the others by ethnicity, a foreigner, Jesus calls him, he came and he threw himself at Jesus' feet, as you see uh, portrayed in the bulletin cover today. When he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. We find in the Bible that when people have been richly blessed by Christ, motivated by the Spirit of God, throw themselves at Jesus' feet. And so you can think about when Jesus went to visit at the home of Mary and Martha, that Mary positioned herself in the role of a disciple at Jesus' feet, listening to the word of the Lord. Or the woman who had been healed by the Lord Jesus came and broke open the perfume vial and washed Jesus' feet with her hair. Or we can think about the 24 elders as is recorded in the book of Revelation when Jesus is present in the throne room of heaven, the 24 elders representing the whole church, Old Testament, New Testament, they bow down with their, with their heads before the feet of Jesus. He came thanking and praising God in a loud voice. He recognized Christ as the Son of the living God. That made a difference in his life. Jesus said, was only one to be found to return thanking God. Jesus receives the praise, for truly he is the Lord of healing and the King of the universe, the Master of creation, one with the Father, with the Spirit, true God. This one came thanking the Lord Jesus and was commended, go, your faith has made you well. Now I'm sure that these ten lepers experienced other things in their lives that brought about their earthly demise. And their bones and their dust and ashes have joined with the march of time we know that we are but ashes and dust. And yet we proclaim with Joel of old, I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the end I shall see him. Long after my flesh has been destroyed, yet in my body I shall see God. This is my dream. Thank you, the Lord. The call of you and me as Christians in the modern day world, as we see and know and understand that we have been forgiven of the leprosy of sin, that we have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world, are called, called not to a life of shallow thanks, but a life of true gratitude for what God has accomplished us, for our life, for our eternity. One of the longest running television shows is a raunchy comedy known as The Simpsons. And uh, you can, even if you've never watched the program, you can't help but go into Walmart or any other store. There's posters and t-shirts and the like for the Simpsons family. And so the little mischievous boy, Bart, at one point was asked by the father of Homer in one of the episodes, uh, Bart, you give thanks uh, for the meal. To which Bart Boy responded, Dear God, we paid for all this stuff ourselves, so thanks for nothing. <laughs> A lot of people are there. 
They think that the things that they have, they have earned by the sweat of their brow and by their own prowess, their smartness, or by dumb luck. But as the people of God, we recognize that our Lord opens his hand and he satisfies the desire of every living creature, including us. Paul wrote to the Thessalonian Christians, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So if you are suffering from unemployment, if you are suffering from some kind of a fatal disease, if you are suffering the anguish of separation from your loved ones, if you are suffering because those you love have been taken and ripped asunder from you, Paul invites you to give thanks in all circumstances. For as God's people, we understand that in the forgiveness of sins, in the power of the risen Christ, we shall not die, but we shall live. Today is not a bad day. Today in Christ, is a good day. I bid you, dear friends, relish the good days that you have been given by Christ as we cry out, Jesus, Master, mercy us. And friends, He does just that. He mercies us for time and for eternity. Amen. May the peace which passes all understanding keep our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Amen. This time it is our joy to sing the praises that our God deserves. And again, I would remind you as we stand, the choir will sing the first two stanzas.